because that was the, the tool that the enemy used to keep me contained and defeated and almost in a holding pattern where I would not even realize my potential. And I, I was just constantly bombarded with thoughts from the enemy. You're no good. You have to try harder to be half as good. You're never going to measure up. Anything you do isn't good enough. It's, it, it can be better. It's a whole perfectionistic thing. Uh, but the main thing about condemnation is that I wasn't pleasing to the Father. Even though I grew up in church and, and I knew what the Bible said, it was like I did not receive the benefit and the blessing of what the Bible, it was like constantly working for God's approval, his pleasure, and just really feeling like God at best was tolerating me. And I believe that it's a cycle, even as I talk to many Christians who love Jesus with all their heart, but they don't enjoy the relationship that we're supposed to have and the benefits of the love of the Father and of sins forgiven. And really to me, it was the answer of the love of God. That, that came and destroyed the condemnation. And he just began to teach me about the word and righteousness. That because of everything Jesus did for us, wow. I'm right with God because of Jesus. Yes. Not because of my good works. Anything good that I do, it's because I am righteous. There are works of righteousness from a place of righteousness, but not for righteousness. Wow. And his love just began to wreck me and to begin to undo some things. I go in depth in the book of how I experienced uh, a horrific time as a child I was lured away under a tree and I was sinned against uh, against my body and I was abused under that tree and immediately the enemy spoke to me and said God's mad at you God does not like you wow. and so at seven years old it set me on a course of trying to get the approval of God so in short I wrote the book to help people who are struggling with who they are in Christ identity issues of forgiveness perfectionism trying to measure up Rather than just relaxing and receiving the love of the Father and allowing Jesus to take what's wrong and make it right, right. and to get into the presence of God and right. just to enjoy that fullness. Right. And you, you know, it's funny because I spoke to one of your wonderful women from your group. Her name was Karen. And she, she gave me a glimpse as well um, of a wonderful quote um, from your book. And she says, um, her favorite quote was, The devil used her knowledge of the word to beat her up instead of the word as it intended to be used to build her yes, up. Yes, yes. And, you know, I kind of wanted to ask you that. I mean, what is, was that impact in your life? I needed to ask you that. Well, we know that the enemy knows the word. Yes. In fact, he was taunting Jesus with scripture out of context. Yes. And I had a great knowledge of the Word of God. I've been reading my Bible since I was five years old. I've always had a love for the Word. Yeah. And the Word can write me like nothing else could write me. Yeah. But when I began to go into the season of this tremendous, and I'm talking years of condemnation, I found that the enemy was using my knowledge of the Scripture to drive me to perform, do more for God. Yeah. The world is lost and dying and going to hell. What are you doing? You're not doing enough. You're not doing enough. And it, in essence, robbed the joy that I'm supposed to have in co-laboring with Jesus wow. for the gospel to bring the harvest. Wow. The spirit of God leads, demons drive. And so that drivenness was not of God. And it would be mistaken by others for she has great zeal, she's got great passion. Yes, but see, I was working to be loved and accepted by my father. Mm -hmm. Not understanding I fully was because the enemy would sit there and tell me, you're unworthy, you're burying your one talent in the ground. He's going to come and he's going to judge you. He would take parables of Jesus' teaching and twist them in my head to tell me I'm a one talent Christian and I buried it in the ground and I'm not doing anything to bring it forth. And it would just drive me. And none of it was true, of course, right? at all. But see, he is a liar. He's the father of every lie. 
And so he would take the word of God, and rather than it build me and encourage me and edify me and build my faith, he would use it to tell me, you don't measure up here, you don't measure up there. It was like a clipboard. Uh, you're wrong in this area, you're okay in that area, you're a little short in this area. And it was something that was not of, of God's heart and the spirit, but that religious thing to just tell you, you're never enough when Jesus makes us enough. Right. And many of us want to use that like we you know it like the devil wants to use that on us like a crutch yes you know he just wants to use that like we're never enough for god we're never enough you'll never add up you'll never be enough for him you know yes you'll never be enough for him how dare you come right. how dare you right. come for the throne room of god you're never enough for him Mm -hmm. You know, and it's so wonderful of this book, you know, it's so number that because it's going to reach so many. Yes, I believe it. I've had tremendous, you know, stories of, of how people have been touched by that. It's on Amazon. And so people have taken it and sent it to family members that were in prison. It's a men's prison. Wow. I could never get into a men's prison, but my book is there and I'm having wonderful reports of how they're having an encounter with Jesus because my prayer is that his everlasting arms would just wrap around them. Wow and love them and heal them because he, he's so merciful and he's so good and there's hope for all of us. We don't have to live in condemnation. The devil will come and say, you're not praying enough, you're not reading the Bible enough. And I always tell the devil, I pray more than you do. My prayer life is better than yes. your prayer life. There's something about standing in your dominion and just taking authority over him and saying, no more, I'm not living this way. I'm going to live in the love of God. And so when I start going things now that they're driving me, I just go to his presence and I just sit. And I let him reset me. Yes, amen. And you know what? We're just taking over territory. Yes. That was already ours. Yes. That belonged to us already. That's good. You know, yes. that's it was already ours. And the enemy just wanted to overtake that territory that already belonged to our to us. Yes. That was our territory to begin with. You know? Yes. So it's like just telling the enemy that was ours. Right. You know, it belonged to us. Evict him. Get that's him right. Out. This yes. belonged to me. You know, you can't take what was already mine, you know. That's, That's good. so good. That's so, so good. So how can we find your books? Do, do you have a website? Is it on Amazon? Yes, it is available on Amazon under Crushing Condemnation or my name, Teresa Verdecchio. And also our website, you can contact us. That's newdestinyofphilly.com. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I also wanted to talk to you because I know that you also have another three CD series, which is awesome because she also has another one called Bitter Root Judgment, believe it or not, this is amazing. And, uh, you know, this is really interesting because uh, if you give us a, a small glimpse into bitterness, into, you know, the root of it, where it comes from, and I want you to give me a, a small glimpse into that one too. Uh, one of the anointings that, uh, the Lord has used in my life is the anointing of a deliverer. Yeah. And the thing about bitter root judgments is that it's basically our sinful response to the sins wow. that others have committed against us. Yeah. And it has a boomerang effect. If I judge somebody because of out of a place of woundedness, pain, or their sin against me, and I have you ever did that? I will never be like my mother. I will never be like my father, or I will never be like this person. Out, you're doing the same yes. exact thing. It's because what we do someone else, like I will never, because we judge them. We have this bitter, uh, hostile, almost like this disdain for them and their failures and their weaknesses and their sins and this almost self righteous superiority. I will never. That is a surefire way of, it's like a boomerang. That thing comes down upon us because the Bible says, whatever a man sows, he shall reap. Come on. And it does not matter. It is it is without prejudice. There is no partiality of that. So if I'm sowing judgment, yes, I am going to reap the judgment. But sometimes I reap it through someone else, and I'm not discerned. Wait, mm -hmm. I'm reaping through my husband. What I said, I never with my father. Come on. And so it, it's a way of just coming, and and the Holy Spirit shines light, and we get yes. unhooked from those areas where He's entrapped us, mm -hmm. where He has ensnared us. And we can break agreement with it and repent and forgive and release those who have sinned against us. And I believe with the word of God, with the principles of how to handle and the right responses when we are sinned against. So this thing does not continually perpetuate and defeat us further. 
wow, this is good. And not only that, do you also talk about, you know, breaking the root of that, not only through ourselves, but through our family members, too. Yes. Because, you know, not only that, it can, you know, ensnare our children. Right. You know, it can go so deep, down deep, you know, that it can start capturing them. Yes. You know, it can just be a, such a bitter root inside of us that, you know, we don't even see that being a generational curse. Right. right. Being such a deep down generational curse, we don't even know that. Sometimes, you know, it, it can be such a nasty, bitter end. It can be a generational curse. Believe it or not, it's our family friends and friends again. You have no idea how long it's been growing from 1800s, 1900s, yep. 2000. 40 generations back. Then. Right. And you have to break that curse way up there, guys. You don't even know. You know, that anger has probably started way from grandmamas, you know, and then you have to break that curse somewhere, yes. you know. And this is amazing. It's a three-part series that you probably have no idea. Wait a minute. Probably that bitterness started not from me, but from somewhere else. Right. You know, and we have to break it somewhere, you know. Yes, yes. And, and I believe that we're the generation that's called to break it. Anything in your bloodline, let's use alcoholism as an example. Yeah. You struggle with alcohol, one of your parents struggle with alcohol, their parents struggle yes. with alcohol, you see generational curses. But I believe I'll be the stand up and say, in my generation, I will be the one that says the buck stops here. Yes. In my book, I talk about it may not be your fault, but it is your fight. That's right. We're born into certain families and we're born into certain situations where there's a fault line there. It's like yes. everyone just kind of falls in that place. But I believe that once we identify it, that we can stand up by the spirit of the Lord with the anointing, we can break generational curses. Just because it's always been doesn't mean it has to continue. Yes. Someone can stand up and they can change their family. They can change the legacy. They can begin to make something, uh, uh, cause there to be something different and say the buck stops here. The power of the blood of Jesus. I'm going to drive out the enemy and I'm going to begin to have somebody stand up in my generation and change it to where my daughters and my sons aren't violated. There's, we're not bound by addiction. Incarceration stops Amen. lack of education Amen. stops all the poverty stops Amen. and so when you're born into a family you can get stuck everyone's like this no we're never stuck amen it is not our fault but it is our fight and we can stand up and we can fight and make and break those things galatians says curse is everyone who hangs tree and jesus hung on a tree for us and he broke the curses at the name of jesus the blood of jesus and the word is cursed are broken and when we identify them and break bring with and appropriate the power of the cross yes. of Jesus Christ this can be broken. we learn new and different ways to relate yes. and how to do life we begin to have the freedom within to live the principles without so I am I am just rejoicing because I've seen so many deliverances and things take place I have other CDs they go to newdestinyofphilly.com. There's other deliverance CDs because I believe in driving the devil out, keeping him out. It's easy to get free, but I also teach you how to stay free. Good. In Jesus' name. Yes. And everything that we say, no matter what we say, remember death and life is a death and life is in your tongue. Yes. You know, so whatever you say, you know, remember what you say. You deliver yourself. You have to deliver. God has given you power. Yes. You yes. know, to so deliver your family. God is giving you power to deliver your community. God is giving you that power around your neighborhood. You can you can deliver. You know, you could be that one that says, I'm going to deliver my, my sister. I'm going to deliver my husband. I'm going to deliver my children. Absolutely. Because I have that power, you know. And we're giving you the instrumental tools to be able to do that, you know. And, and this is a powerful woman of God. And so, are you. and so I'm giving you the instrumental tool. She has another one. It's called Master Keys. The Master Keys, correct? That's the other one that you have. I have many different things. To be honest with you, they're going to know the, the labels. Of, but pretty much, I preach deliverance yes. and the anointing to destroy the yoke and to get people free. Wonderful, wonderful. And so if you can go ahead and go by her uh, website, um, she does have there um, your your ministry is also um, your your ministry 
Ministry, and we're located where? Outside of outside of Philadelphia. We are in Ridley Park, right outside of South Philly, South okay. Philadelphia. And we have a wonderful church that my husband and I planted and pioneered. Okay. And God is just pouring out His Spirit. We're getting ready to celebrate our 10th year anniversary. Okay. And we went in there, didn't know anybody, but God knows them. And He just began to draw and call those that are broken and lost out. We have um, new converts. These are first-time believers. They were unbelievers. We preached the gospel to them. Uh, we do not have a lot of transferred church growth, people from other churches. And that is by design because... We're consumed with the cause of Christ to go and seek and save that which was lost and to see people come to get saved, healed, and delivered the power of Deborah mm -hmm. and then teaching them how their life can be successful through obeying the principles of the Word of God. So mm -hmm. we're located outside of the Philadelphia area. If you're over there, please come by and visit us. Mm -hmm. And uh, your family, you're in the kingdom, your family, if you're not in the kingdom, we're going to get you in the kingdom. That's right, amen. We love you. That's we want right. to see you saved. Amen. So if you're looking for a church, and you're close to Philadelphia and you're looking for a church home, we definitely want to invite you to come on out. Yes. If you're looking for a church home, please come by there. If not, look at their website, try to find, try to plug in. Um, we invite you to come and get some of uh, Teresa's, Pastor Teresa Verdecchio's um, wonderful CDs, wonderful books. And, and uh, please plug in. If you're looking for someone to pray for you, you do have uh, a way to connect and be yes, able to absolutely. have someone to pray for you. And, it was wonderful to be able yes. to talk to you guys and, and Pastor Teresa. And uh, please come on by. And uh, we'll see you, family and friend togetherness. And God bless. God bless you.